Thank you very much for asking us back to talk again, to start with. Um, I have got loads of stuff that I want to tell you, and I've only got 15 minutes, so this is going to be really fast. Um, so apologies if I am speaking a bit fast. Come and find me afterwards if you have any questions, but there's just a lot of stuff that I want to get across today. So what I want to do are kind of three things, just to give you a reminder of what BF and I are, who the admin team are, which, who we haven't really introduced to before, um, and what we do, and tell you a bit about what the women are telling us about what what they feel about breastfeeding support, both within BFNI and wider within the health service, and what we think the implications of that are for research and practice, because I know that's something that you're, you're wanting to know this afternoon. So to give you an interv a bit of an overview of BFNI, first of all, there are kind of two entities of, in BFNI. There's a, a closed Facebook group, and then there's an open public Facebook page. So the closed Facebook group is the main part of what BFNI is, and it is huge. It has over 10,000 members now, um, all, all mums within, within Northern Ireland, either pregnant mums, mums who are breastfeeding or have breastfed but have maybe stopped now, and then there's health professionals in there as well. But um, it's anybody who's in there, it's in, they're there as a peer support network. Um, our goal is really to provide evidence-based information and support to the mums, but also to be a listening ear to them, that the mums are the important thing, that their voices are heard, that they feel heard, that they feel listened to. Um, it is peer support, so anyone can, anyone that's in that group can jump on and can give their experiences and reply to mums, but it's not a kind of free-for-all forum. It is quite heavily moderated by the admin team. So we moderate both the posts and the comments. So we make sure that only posts that are supposed to be there are in there. So only posts that are about breastfeeding. We don't allow posts about ads or other kind of random things, selling things. Um, so we take all of those out. But we also moderate the comments as well for tone to make sure that the kind of responses that women are getting are empathetic, are non-judgmental, are counselling. Um, and that we're getting evidence-based stuff in there as well. We're not getting a lot of stuff about, well, here's where you can get a cure for that, or here's a charm, or here's special creams, and all that kind of stuff. So we work very hard at making sure that the tone is right and that the information that women are getting is right. And then we have a Facebook page as well, and that's really about education. It's not as busy because, to be honest, we're just really kind of very busy with the Facebook group. But with the page, we will try to put out information about breastfeeding to the wider public, just as an, an education to community um, in general. So, okay. So the admin team, as I say, it's not a free-for-all group. There is a very dedicated admin team who are doing a lot of work behind the scenes to run the group. Um, and they are, they are a very skilled group. It's not just a random bunch of people that we've got together. They're a very skilled group at what they do. We've got 13 members in that admin team. Of them, one of them is a GP, one is a lactation consultant. We have three La Leche League leaders. We have two who are training to be La Leche League leaders. We have one who trained with NCT and their breastfeeding counsellor programme. We have four active peer supporters. Two of them are working or training in professional um, psychological therapies and therapeutic counselling. And we have a woman's aid support worker as well. And that last one I think is actually really important because she often picks up things that the rest of us don't see. You know, just, just the way that a post is written or the or kind of patterns that are coming up in someone's posts, which might be a bit concerning to her that the rest of us wouldn't notice. Um, and between the 13 of us, we have over 60 years of lived breastfeeding experience. So it's a very skilled team, both in their own experience of breastfeeding, in their training around breastfeeding, but also in their skills around counselling and listening as well. And we think that's part of what makes it so successful. It's a real labour of love for those 13 people because it is a hugely busy group. This is just a snapshot of one day. I just took a random day and I think it was a Sunday because that was the time that I had, sit, I had available to sit down and do it. And these were just the posts that we had that day. I don't have time to kind of go through them all. You can have a read at them there. Um, but you'll, you'll see down here, that was um, over the, the 28 days previous to me doing that. That's how many comments and posts and reactions there were within the group. So there's over 30,000. And the admin team make an effort to read every single one. We don't, we don't always get to everyone, but we, we do try. So we, it's, a, it's a very, very busy group. I, did, I, did, I don't have time to kind of go through all of the ones that were on the previous page, but I thought it might be helpful just to group them into what kind of posts that we were getting. So when I looked at that day, 42% of those were some kind of a, plea, of a plea for help, some kind of this is happening to me, 
has it happened to you? You know, what did you do for it? Or my baby is doing this, is it normal? Some kind of a plea for help. 17% of them were informational posts. That might be, there's a breastfeeding feeding group running at this time in this location, or it might be something about, did you know that when you're breastfeeding, this is happening, or your baby is getting these benefits, or, or something like that. But 25% of them are celebration posts. And we think that's really important. And those might be things like, I find this so difficult at the, part, at the start, and now I can't believe I've got to six weeks. I'm so glad that I have got here. Or um, my baby is sick at the minute, and I'm so glad that I am able to give him this comfort, and I know that he's getting loads of antibodies while I'm, while I'm feeding. Or it might be, you know, I've got to two years, and now I'm winning, and it's bittersweet, and I'm so proud of what I have achieved. And those things are really important, that sense of empowerment of women, because that sense of empowerment creates a sense of confidence and self-efficacy. And we know from the research that self-efficacy is a predictor of breastfeeding duration and level. So we feel that that's really important. And one of the big ethos within BFNI is that we provide you know, evidence-based information and support, but that the mother is, she is the expert in her baby. And what we're trying to do is give her all the information that she needs so she can make the right decisions for her baby. And that we're doing this in an empathetic way and we're listening to her and being present to her so we ran, um, we ran a, a, a survey um, in September to ask people how we were doing at that, basically. And these are a few of the, a few of the things that we asked about. So we asked whether BFNI was helping their feelings of confidence. And we had almost 95% of people said that it had helped their feelings of confidence. We also asked how important we, that they felt the tone of responses were. And again, it was, it was virtually 100%. It was like 99% or something felt that the tone and uh, the kind of empathy that they received back was important. We asked if, if they had asked for support themselves, how did they feel that they were heard? Did they feel that the responses were empathetic to them? And so 97% felt that they were very much or somewhat heard, which we think is good because it's a very large group. There's 10,000 people on there and not all of them will be as empathetic as other people. And, um, and the, the way that they respond to things will not all be the same. Um, so then as well as that, we asked how they felt that the admin team were moderating and managing that. Because part of what we'll do is if, you know, if the tone of something is a bit judgmental, usually one of the admin will go on and try to redirect that gently. Um, and so they found, I think it was, it was over 90% anyway, thought that we were doing either very well or quite well with that. So we're really pleased with how that is going. Um, we do get some criticism sometimes from healthcare professionals about um, allowing women to complain within the group about the experiences they might be having. Sometimes we'll get emails from, or messages from people saying, I don't think it's fair that, that that person said that. Now, what I want to say about that is that, um, firstly, we, we do always encourage women to feed back to the trust if they have negative experiences. We also don't let anybody be personally identified. So we don't let anyone name who a health professional might be or where, you know, what area they were in or anything that can personally identify them. But equally, we're not going to censor what women's lived experiences are, because we're there to listen. We're there to be a present voice or a, pre a present ear for them. And part of that is, li is listening to their real experiences. And so I wanted to share as well a little bit about some of the experiences, the negative experiences that women are having around this listening idea. Now, I know we know that sometimes people have to get here very um, difficult things. Sometimes they have to be told, you know, your baby's not gaining weight or you're going to need to supplement. And, there are difficult messages that need to be given, and we understand that. But we feel there is a way that information that can be given that make women feel more empowered, and there's a way that information that can, can be given that make them feel completely disempowered. So the next couple of screens are about negative experiences that women had. And what I did was pull was get the posts that they had um, that they had written, and I have I've changed them, I've kind of brought them up into two columns. So on the left column, you'll see how the woman was feeling about herself. And on the right, you'll see how she was feeling about the person that she was interacting with. I think it makes a really kind of strong statement. So the first one up there, feeling so heartbroken today, I was advised it'll make no difference now. So that woman has been told that the effort that she is making around breastfeeding is pointless. She might as well not bother. I'm in agony. Told me they look fine. This was a woman who was in agony. She had really painful nipples. And when she went and asked for help, she was told, well, they look all right. She was just completely disregarded. Her, her pain and her distress was completely disregarded. I'm at my wit's end and it's making me utterly miserable. Was completely fobbed off. 
just not listened to at all. I'm really confused. She said, I'm feeding him too much. I'm giving him wind. So this was a mum who's distressed about how her baby is upset and is windy, and she was blamed for it. Well, it's your fault. It's the way you're feeding your baby. That's why your baby is like that. I was nearby myself, spent the rest of the afternoon and evening very emotional and on edge. She was insensitive, unsupportive. Don't think there's anything more you really need to say about that one. Disappointed with my experience. His response was, you need to knock that on the head. He hadn't actually asked me if the night feeds bothered me or how I was coping. Just not being listened to. Feeling amazing today. I'm glad I didn't give up on breastfeeding. That says it's a constant battle with midwives and doctors. So that was a celebration post. That woman felt really proud of what she had done, but she felt she'd had to battle with the healthcare professionals to get there, which I think is really sad. It's just really sad. Now, you know, obviously this is not all experiences. And some people post and say, oh, my health visitor came today and she was absolutely fantastic. Or my midwife came today and she has turned everything around for me. And we, you know, we absolutely hear those, but we do hear these and we hear them over and over again. So there is an issue there with the way that information is being given to women. We know like the last couple of events that were here have been really good. And there was, there was, some, there was um, some research presented, I don't know whether it was last year or the year before, but the message that came out was that what women want is to feel that someone is present with them. And that's the message that we're getting in BFNI as well, that they want someone to feel present, they want someone to really listen to them. Um, and we also had a really good talk here about how behaviour change needs people to have the skills for that behaviour, but they also need to have the value, that val there needs to be value placed on that behaviour. And we don't feel that women are really feeling valued and that they, what they are doing is valued. And it should be because what they're doing is amazing. You know, it's absolutely amazing. They are you know, they are making differences to their own health trajectory and their baby's health trajectory. They are easing the burden on the health service. They are making the society healthier and wealthier and have, you know, have more economic potential by, by all of this stuff that they're, they're doing. They're superwomen. It's absolutely amazing. What we would like to see are um, a research and interventions around counselling, around, around the way that information is given. I gave that little, that little quote earlier on there from the research about self-efficacy being a significant predictor of breastfeeding duration and level. It went on to say that if you have you know, um, strategies that might you know, increase that self-efficacy, it will increase a mother's confidence in her ability to breastfeed and to persevere if she encounters difficulties. We think that the kind of strategies that have been used so far have been you know, looking at the skills and not really at value, the value of the woman and what she is doing and, and, and looking at the way that information is given to her. That's what we would really like to see and we'd like to see what changes that could make in, in breastfeeding rates. So thank you very much.